Hello everyone. I hope all of you are doing well. With the advances in computer vision, one field that is kind of reaping the rewards of computer vision is optical character recognition or OCR. It is here that I recently discovered an amazing Python library called as document text recognition or doctr. Doctr has made OCR really seamless. It gives really good performance and is accessible to everyone with very few lines of code. So in today's video, I'll show you a small demo of this amazing library. I'll also add the link to the repository in the description section of the video. Feel free to check out this amazing library. Before we start using the amazing library, we'll have to first install it. So let me go forward and first clone the repository. So the way I would do that is by the command git clone and I'll pass in the URL of the repository. So let me go forward and run the cell. There is one more dependency that doctr requires. So I'll go forward and install tensorflow hyphen add-ons. So let me go forward and run this. Now that one major dependency is installed, let me now go forward and install the amazing library that is doctr. Now that the installation is complete, let me now go forward and show you how you can utilize this amazing library. Before we start utilizing this amazing library, I'll require two functions in order to create predictions from images. So the first thing that I'll require is a function called as document file and the other that I'll require is OCR underscore predictor. So let me go forward and write commands equivalent for that. So I'll write from doctr.io import document file. This is the first function that I require from doctr.models import OCR predictor. So these are the two functions that I require. So it gives me an error. Are we on the right track? Well, one thing that we didn't do is we didn't restart the runtime so i'm using google collab so let me go forward and first restart the runtime so the way i would do that is i'll go here i'll click on runtime and i'll click on restart runtime so let me press yes now i don't think this should give an error So yes, it works like a charm right now. Now the next thing that I'll require is a pre-trained model. So for that, I'll create a variable called as model. I'll call the OCR underscore predictor function. So I'll say OCR underscore predictor. And I'll say pre-trained equal to true. There are other models as well that you can try out. I'm kind of using the default model. So let me go forward and run this cell. What this will essentially do is download the default model. And this is the one that we'll be utilizing for making predictions. So the model download step is complete. Now the next thing that we have to do is make predictions. Just to give you context, I've already uploaded two images with the name img1.jpg and img2.jpg into the Google Collab session. So essentially these are the two images that I'll be utilizing for making predictions. So let me close this. Now I'll create a variable called as document. The power of this library is not only does it work on images, it also works on PDFs as well. So Feel free to explore the documentation in detail to understand what are the different use cases that you can solve using this library. I call the document file instance that I had created. 
and from this particular instance I call the function from images so if you look at the import values as well so so here there are multiple options called as from images from PDF and from URL I'll choose from images and I'll pass in the image name so let me go forward and run this most of the things are set up now I need very few things at this point of time the first thing is I'll have to call the model function I'll have to pass in the document and I'll have to save the result into a variable called as result so this is all that I require so now let me go forward and run this cell so behind the scene the model has made a prediction now in order to make sense of what the predictions are let me go forward and show you the result on the image itself so the way I would do that is result.show and I'll pass in the document so let me go forward and run this so this is one image that I could catch hold of so it has very limited text here which is the word tensorflow so it's kind of detected where the text is it's created a bounding box as well in that region now if you want to utilize where the actual text is you also have an option of generating a JSON response so let me show that to you as well so I create a variable called as JSON response and from the result that is generated I I call the export function so let me run this now if we go over the JSON response this is what we have the value that you require essentially is tensorflow for a lot of you parsing this JSON is also a very big activity so I'll kind of go over how you should parse such JSON outputs as well so the first thing that you see here in this JSON response is basically a dictionary so I'll first reference it as so I'll first access this particular key which is pages now if you look at the structure it is basically a list so I don't know how many elements are present so first thing that I'll do is I'll calculate the length of this particular response which is 1 so essentially I can reference this by 0 I can remove this length as well now again I have a dictionary like structure with the first key as blocks so I'll kind of reference that I have a list again so I'll again check how many values are there inside this list again there is just one value so I'll remove the length call that I created and I'll say 0 I'll reference it using the value 0 now again I have a dictionary so now if you look at what we want I essentially want to capture the text that is inside this particular say variable inside this particular response so I want this particular key value to be extracted out so if you look at the structure as well at this point of time it's fairly simple so I have to access lines now again it's a list I don't know how many elements are present although I know but still just to be sure there is just one element that is present so I access it using 0 again now I have two keys here that is geometry and words I access words it's evident from the output again that the list has only one element so I again say 0 and now I'm left with key value pairs and this is the text that we have what we've looked at in this example is a case where an image contains only one word what if there are multiple words in an image so let me go forward and change the image now So I'll quickly change the image from image1 to image2.jpg I'll call the model function and I'll pass in the new image
now i have the predictions ready now let me go forward and show you the output So this is the image. I got vaccinated. I took my second dose of vaccination as well. So this is the image from that particular day. So it has a lot of different text values as well, like beat COVID, Jupiter Hospital, patient first, I got my COVID-19 vaccine and so on and so forth. So there are multiple words here. The next thing that I do is I kind of extract all the outputs in form of a JSON. And this time the JSON response would be huge. So if you look at the response, this is how the response is. Now, if the task is to extract all the X that is present in this particular image, then I'll have to tweak the response so as to get the exact words that exist in this particular response. So most of the things would still remain the same. I can see that till words, I don't have to modify anything. So I'll kind of replace this piece of code. So this is what we have. I have value minus sign here. I have I beat coin. So not Bitcoin, but beat coin. The reason why this is not giving an accurate output is because if you look at the image, it has a victory symbol in the text. So that is why the output is not very accurate. So I have this particular response and I have key value pairs here. So what I do is for words in this particular response, print words of value. So this should essentially give me all the keywords that are present in the image. Well, this is all that I had in today's video. I wanted to show you a quick demo of this amazing library called as doc.tr. Go forward and experiment with it and I am sure you would kind of enjoy the process of using this in your day to day workflow. If you like the content that I create, please share it with your friends and also make it a point to subscribe to my videos. Thank you so much for watching this video.